I'd love to hear if this new direction that On is taking is enough to convince you if you haven't been a fan of On before. No speed board, more room? <laughs> no. The On Cloud Surfer looks and feels completely different than anything else in the On running shoe line. But is this a one-off experiment or the first in a series that takes them down a new direction and opens them up to a wide variety of runners and running experiences? So just a quick disclaimer before we get deeper into the shoe, I am an REI employee and these shoes were provided for review, but the opinions I'm expressing are completely my own based on my experience in the shoes. The OnCloud Surfer is a neutral runner coming in at 8.6 ounces per shoe. There's 10 millimeters of drop in the shoe with 32 millimeters of stack height in the heel and 22 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. So over the last couple of years, you know, I've got to try a few ons and spend a little bit of time in them. My favorite has been the OnCloud Monster. I was like, whoa, this is a lot of energy return for a max cushion shoe. This is a really responsive like cloud movement. And I just didn't get that excited with some of the other on shoes. Like, you know, I've tried the on cloud runners. Um, I spent some time in the cloud goes. They felt like I understood that there was that kind of midsole ride that they were expecting me to have and kind of get excited about, but I didn't really get that level of excitement from it. When I tried on the Cloud Surfer, I felt like I was on the other side of the spectrum from the Cloud Monster. This just felt like, oh, this is not a lot of energy return, but definitely that squishy feeling that I would expect when I think of the word clouds. And again, I think I look at the midsole and I'm like, oh, it makes sense the way it's constructed. It's just meant to kind of move in that direction and meant to sink in without kind of pushing back up. So for me, this feels like if I look at the OnCloud range, this is like the squishiest. And I think like for me, the monster is the most responsive. And that's kind of like, you can choose anything in between, but I think if you're looking for a cloud experience, these two shoes might be the ones that illustrate the best. So if we look at the Cloud Surfer top to bottom, we'll obviously start with the upper first. This shoe's got a lot of unique features, I think especially compared to within the online itself. The first thing I noticed was like these kind of call outs here on the upper where it's like these really interesting silver kind of overlays that lead to this nylon kind of like cord that the laces are run through at the bottom of the shoe. So it's kind of cool because the laces go a little bit further down the toe box, which is not a lot of running shoes give you, so you get a little bit more secure fit there. I didn't feel like I needed to go with a heel lock tie on this shoe, so it was a pretty comfortable fit. Putting my foot or my hand in the shoe itself, the first thing I noticed was that like it does have a little bit more of a wide fit for some on shoes. And again, you do feel that volume. You can actually see if I like kind of put my hand up there, you have a little bit more volume in the shoe. So having a few more options to lock it down is pretty nice. I use this shoe mostly as kind of like a low zone run shoe, Z1, Z2, but I did try to run a little bit faster in it, like, you know, push myself a little bit more. Through the different runs that I took it in, I never felt like I needed to lock it down a little bit any more than I did. That probably comes from, again, the laces going all the way down here and the tongue being a little bit more plush. So even though it's a wider fit and a higher volume shoe, I do feel like once everything got in there, it just felt pretty comfortable. If we move back towards the heel, we'll notice that the heel counter's got a lot of padding on it. It's something that you would expect from like a plush premium style shoe. If you push down on it, you'll notice that there's not a lot of stiffness to it, which is kind of nice. Sometimes those really padded heels come with a lot of stiffness. Once you get down here, you'll start to notice a little bit more stiffness as it transitions to the midsole. But overall, the story of the upper is kind of like plush. It's got lots of room. It's got lots of options for tying it. Also, like one thing that's good to call out is it's got double layer mesh in there. That's really easy to tell if you just put your hand or your feet in there. You can't see your socks or your hand. You'll notice that there's an extra layer there. So it still gives you some of that breathability, but still gives you a lot of protection. You'll notice my shoes get pretty muddy because there's a lot of mud around here, even on Seattle streets. So it's kind of nice that my feet also stay a little bit cleaner when you have that extra layer of mesh there. Moving down towards the midsole, you know, we've got On's proprietary Helion foam. But the interesting thing this year is that On has kind of re-engineered it. So they've said that they've optimized it both with human intuition and computer engineering, which is pretty far out. Basically, it's supposed to be better. It's supposed to kind of like, you know, give you a little bit more of a comfortable feel. And they've moved on to calling the cloud tech portion of the midsole actually cloud tech phase. What that means in actuality for me when I look at the shoe is that there's a difference in the way the clouds rebound. 
And there's also what's interesting about this shoe is that like the orientation of the clouds. Usually for on shoes, you have the clouds that are oriented kind of like just straight up or vertical, maybe a little bit at an angle for some of like the cloud monster, some of the faster shoes. But these ones are kind of really kind of slanted forward. It's like, hey, we're moving in that direction, which is cool. Also, there's a lack of speedboard on this shoe, which basically makes the clouds kind of squish and not bounce back up as fast. You can kind of see if I push down on it, it just kind of goes regularly like what you would expect kind of EVA to do. There is a little bit more density to it than just super squishy EVA, but overall, that's what gives this shoe its like squishiest feel more so than any other on. If we move down towards the outsole of the shoe, you'll see that there's, again, some exposed Helion foam in there and a midsole pretty common for lots of running shoes. And then they're gonna reinforce with rubber on the outsole in the heel and the toe off section. For me that I spend a lot of time on the forefoot part of my strike, it makes sense that there's a lot more kind of padding there and a lot more reinforcement. Getting back here, you'll also notice that where they put the reinforcement on the forefoot, the clouds are actually smaller. And it's kind of interesting as you move through the gait cycle of the shoe, you're actually getting the smaller and smaller clouds, which kind of makes sense in the way they kind of have this laid out on the outsole. Also, with kind of just keeping the Helion foam exposed on the mid portion of the shoe, you get some weight savings. This shoe is actually pretty light for On's lineup, and you can see that they, without the speed board and keeping some of this outsole exposed, they helped accomplish that while still keeping a pretty premium fit on the upper part of the shoe. So I love to call out some sustainability things for footwear whenever it's appropriate. And for the Cloud Surfer, their big thing is the dye process that they're using for this shoe. It's a dope dye process, kind of a cool name, but essentially it uses a lot less water to get the dye that they need for any of these models. So my first impression of the Cloud Surfer was that it just looked pretty strange and unusual to me. I mean, like some of these design callouts are like, oh, that's interesting. I haven't seen those things kind of all put together in one shoe. So I didn't really know what to expect when I kind of pulled them out of the box. I thought they looked cool, but I was like, oh, I wonder what these will feel like. Also, I was kind of struck by the way the clouds were structured. So I thought that this might feel a little bit different but I really thought I was gonna get kind of like more energy response in the shoe because that's what lots of the cloud tech technology does. But my first impression of the shoe was that like, it was roomier than a lot of other ons. It was just, it just felt good. It was also like a lot more plush than I expected it to be. And then when I went out on my run, I just like was pretty blown away by how squishy it was. It was not something that I would expect to feel. I feel like on clouds compress a little bit, but not a lot. And these, these just felt like they went all the way down. <laughs> like I got all the way, like squished all the way down and then slowly came back up. Lots of times I think about footwear as like doing this kind of thing. It felt like it was slow motion a lot for this shoe. You know, the word that I kept coming back to and like, it's almost like automatopoeia. Like it just, every time I landed, I was like squishy, squishy, squishy. <laughs> like it just is a really squishy shoe, which, Again, it's kind of like how I felt about the upper. Great for slower runs, great for like chill kind of runs there, some base runs. They wouldn't be a shoe I would reach for for some of my tempo runs or some of my speed workouts. I think that squish that I enjoy on some of the slower runs just doesn't feel like the right shoe for me for some of those faster or some of those tempo runs. It did feel like comfortable. It felt unencumbered. It felt like if I wanted to go a little faster, I was going to have to work for it. <laughs> but it certainly felt interesting. It like just, I immediately thought like, oh, if I wanted to show somebody what cloud technology was, I would probably put them in the shoe and they can feel like, oh yeah, this does feel like I'm running on clouds. So I've put 71 miles on these cloud surfers. And, you know, it's it really interesting because, you know, when I first put them on, I was excited to see how different they were from any other on shoe that I've tried. And now 71 miles in, I feel like I got some pretty strong opinions about the shoe. And, you know, starting with the upper, I've mentioned that it's pretty roomy and it's got lots of volume, but it doesn't feel like it kind of like holds you in as much as some of the other like really cushioned shoes or it doesn't feel like you're choked with the plush. That's cool and I actually dig it, but when I was kind of going slow, I dug it the most because I don't need to feel super locked in when I'm going on like these slower runs or I'm doing on these training runs. But when I was trying to go a little bit faster and I wanted to feel a little bit more locked in or have a little bit more responsiveness or kind of just be a little bit more nimble in general, I did feel like I could move around in the shoe a little bit more. So it was a little roomy for me for like a faster shoe, but really comfortable for some of those like slower runs, some of those recovery runs. When I think about the outsole and the experience there, sometimes outsoles can help you with the recoil, the energy return, the response. 
This shoe doesn't feel like it does that. It just feels like it kind of like, you know, it, like I said, it complements the squishy ride. So for some of those slower runs, it's awesome because you're just like, cool, you can concentrate on stuff. On some of my slower runs, I really like to focus on like my form and my gait. It might be the only runs where I actually have decent form and you know, the gait cycle's okay. The nice thing about this shoe is that like you can squish down and compress the clouds, but you still have a pretty solid platform to push off of. And that really helps me focus on my form because I don't feel like I come down and like, oh, where am I? I feel like I come down, I squish into it and I know where I am, I can pop back up. And this is nice because it helps me do that unencumbered and the outsole or the midsole aren't doing anything to correct or move me around anywhere. I think the OnCloud Surfer is gonna be a great shoe for folks that are looking for a recovery run shoe or a base mile shoe that's a little bit lighter weight. Like the Cloud Surfer is significantly lighter than some other max cushion or recovery run shoes that's definitely more nimble, but still gives you a lot of the plush feeling that you get from some of those like max cushion recovery run targeted shoes. It also gives you that kind of squishy feeling underfoot. So some of those things that you get from max cushion shoes, you're still gonna feel here. You're not gonna get a lot of the energy response that you would on a faster shoe, just like you wouldn't get that in another recovery or max cushion shoe. So I think if you're looking for that experience, if you're looking to rotate footwear in when you're doing some of those easier paced runs, this is gonna be a great option for you to try on. So that's my review of the OnCloud Surfer, but I'd love to hear from y'all. Are you somebody that hasn't been convinced by other On models yet? This shoe is considerably lighter, it doesn't have a speed board, and it's got a softer landing. Is that enough to make you want to try it on? Leave a comment below, I'd love to read it. Uh, just a reminder, hold it a little lower. Lower, yeah. I think what's, it, it, I like want to look through the yeah. clouds, you know what I mean? Yeah.